Hey guys, VBAD here with another V Plays, and we're looking at the LA9. The LA7 and the LA5 before this really kind of prepared us for this line. These aircraft all fly very similarly, and they have very similar setups. It's just you get more guns, uh, they're a little bit higher altitude performance, and a little bit more engine power. But one of the things I noted when I finally upgraded this thing to its top engine is that this aircraft has a little hole in its tail. And it said it was the M93 plus RD1 engine, and it made me go look it up. And it turns out this was like a nitric acid uh, kerosene rocket motor that was actually developed for this aircraft. It's essentially the Russian version of a Jado rocket system. It's just that this Jado rocket was incorporated into the aircraft instead of something that was jettisonable. Now, if you're not familiar with what a Jado is, it's a jet-assisted takeoff. But it's not truly a jet because it's it's actually like a rocket motor. Uh, it's a jet of hot gases that propel it forward. Uh, this was going to be like 600 and some change foot pounds of thrust, just to give you some reference point here. And that's what you would get for this airframe. Cool. Let's see what else we got here. We've got a VB-10. We should be able to keep pace with him and do some damage. The 423s are actually pretty nice, and they do enough damage to get the job done, like we see right there. And we just helped our teammate out by taking that airframe out. This F4U4 is low health, easy enough kill, cool guns coming in really fast. They definitely can make some serious contact on the enemy. Oh, I can't flip a mining plant, but I can sure as heck go over there and help defend it against some ground attackers. But taking the airfield made the most sense for us to go there first. We just lit that aircraft on fire. No, he does not have an RD-1 in the back. That is flames. So let's go ahead and head over here and try and help our allies out. Uh, this aircraft may not have the most impressive top speed or the most impressive altitude op operating altitude at 4,500 feet, but with this RD-1, it gives it the acceleration, which then translates to really good climb rate. So you can get up from underneath people and cause some serious damage. It seems like 400 miles an hour might be pretty fast, but when you compare that with the air speeds of, like, say, a Yak-15, I was able to get up to 480 miles an hour. I just watched that review the other day because somebody, well, I watched it earlier today because somebody posted a comment on it. But let's come in here and try and take out some of these ground attackers. We do have this 329. He's going to be thinner skin than the IL-8. The IL-8 is actually the more heavily armored version of the Tier 7 Russian ground attackers. The alternative would have been the IL-10. They already captured it, huh? Here, I thought we were doing pretty good here. If we stay underneath it, we might be able to avoid some of its fire. It does still have a pretty nasty tail gutter on this thing, so let's come in from the side, limit our exposure to that, and take out the aircraft. We're going to have to leave the rest to our bombers as we vacate the area. Actually, you know what I'm seeing? Something I could probably take out with guns real quick here. There we go. Give myself a little bit of... We're helping. Let's head to the middle and get that airfield back. Having both of the mining plants, if we can get it to tick over, we are going to have a huge advantage against the enemy. Just watching that sea thing to make sure he isn't diving on me. It looks like he's going back towards the mining plant to try and get that zone flipped. What do I see here? Is that the player? Yep, I knew he was in a 109 TL, so I was actually looking for the streaks from behind his engine. We're coming up from underneath. He's not even looking at us. Now, we got to pay attention to what's behind us, though. We should be able to take out an I-250 fairly easily as long as he's in range. 
There we go. He was out of the zone, though. But we did probably offer some protection to our bomber. He's done. One more aircraft here. Looks like there's the I-250 again. There we go. That's the BF-109. We should be able to outmaneuver him. He's broken off. Get up from underneath him again. Good hits with these 23s. These 23s are really nice because they actually carry... Well, they, they're nice not just because they cause good damage, but also because they were free. They came off of the LA-7, and they were already unlocked from that airframe, so easy, easy for us. The Russian grinds tend to... They seem to be a lot easier by comparison to, like, a German grind feels like it takes much longer and is much more difficult to get through because nothing carries over from aircraft to aircraft. Not a press, pretty impressive result there. I'm happy with that. It was only a uh, grade 3, I believe. Yeah, it's a grade 3. So, let's head back to the hangar and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the grind, this airframe, and what I was talking about about the engines. Alright, so here we are at the end results screen. Uh, this is a very reasonable result. Uh, we're looking at 4,300 experience points on our premium account. We managed to take out 15 aerial targets and we took out quite a few air defense aircraft, four of them to be exact. So that was a pretty substantial amount of what we did here. And we got 460 capture points because we helped take out that mining facility. There was a couple of ground targets there that were pretty easy to destroy, which allowed us to be able to get two ground target kills, which I usually never advocate shooting at ground targets, but this is an exception. Like, that was so easy. It was right there. Why wouldn't we have gone for it? So we managed to rack in 12,685 personal points, and, you know, for an all-around loadout, an all-around setup for a, a pilot, I like to go with Engine Guru and Marksman 1 and Aerodynamic Expert, as you see here. And then when I get that 7 skill, I'll throw on Firefighter, and that allows us to kind of have the best of all worlds when it comes to a fighter aircraft. Uh, but there are some exceptions where things are going to be prioritized over others. Um, but with that said, when we look at the equipment, I went with what I call my balanced build. Uh, we are going to go for the gyroscopic sight. We'll put on the lightweight wing frame to get a little bit more maneuverability. And since we're not really losing too much by putting on this upgraded engine, we are able to get some speed out of this airframe. Uh, but with this new Jado engine in the back, I wonder if it wouldn't be worthwhile maximizing the rapid acceleration in this platform for oh i don't know one of these combined boost injection systems because while it will knock off about one second off of our boost i'm willing to bet you it's actually going to increase our climb rate pretty significantly but before we do that let's take a look at what i was talking about with the engine so you can see the second engine here that we unlock which isn't shared with anything by the way allows us to be able to get 4,630 4, horsepower, which is about, give or take, 600 horsepower increase, more like 550 horsepower increase. Then I go and grab this engine, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, wait a minute, there's no increase. Well, it's because it just says it's plus the RD1, which is what you see mounted down here in the tail, because when I mount this, you'll see that it goes away, and we just get a solid tail again. And oddly enough, it doesn't affect the maneuverability at all that you're losing part of your vertical, your uh, rudder section here on your vertical sta stab. But anyways, let's take a look at the difference in climb rate. We're seeing that with the M93, we're getting 390 feet per second climb. 
but when we throw this on, it jumps up drastically to 467, which is what allows us to be able to skyrocket straight up and really makes you very effective at coming up underneath people's bellies, which we saw worked a pretty decent effect in that last battle. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope if you're grinding down the LA line, you see that there is uh, an interesting change in the grind from the LA7 to the LA9 and that you definitely have something to look forward to because the rest of the line changes drastically as we go between the LA160 and then the LA15 as the culmination of the line which I'm really excited to experience. As always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.